G'day, Theo the Woodturner here on behalf of Record Power. Welcome to my workshop. I have today the latest in chucks from Record Power. It's called the SC1 Mini Chuck. And to go with that, I've got the six millimeter pin jaws. I'll give you a little bit of a close up of this beautiful little chuck. There it is there. It's got an insert that matches this lathe, M33 3.5. And there the pin jaws. They'll close to uh, 40 millimeters. So I've got two projects to do today. One is to sharpen my pencil <laughs> on the lathe. And the other one is just this beautiful little pagoda box. Uh, turned it years ago as one of my demos, never finished the underneath. And I want to be able to re remount that on the pin jaws. Uh, you'll get a better look there. You can see the torn out grain. Uh, pretty hard to sand that out. I'll be mounting that and turning that and cleaning that up. So this will finally be finished. There it is there. So firstly, we can't do that until I sharpen my pencil. Now there's six millimeter jaws. This is just over seven millimeters. It's, uh, let's have a look at what sort of pencil this is. Ah, safe. Stay off the tracks. It's the Queensland Railways giveaway pen. So let's mount it in the pin jaws. There we go, nice and clear. I'll bring up the tool rest. I want to make sure that I can get to centre. And I can. Now I'll just show you the grip that I have when I'm spindle turning. Really important. My finger is under the tool rest. The tool is on the tool rest, but also my thumb is touching the tool rest and the tool is wedged right between my thumb and the tool rest. And my fingers come over and then I have absolute control with my body. I can rotate to cut deeper or shallower. And let's see how we can sharpen this pencil. So the speed on the lathe is going to be about mm, 2,700. Face shield. So this, the body of this pen, pencil is made out of paper. Probably makes it a little bit easier to turn, but... I'll turn a little sphere here. Here we go. Another little teardrop. So this is great practice because you're not caressing the bevel, you're just turning really in air. I'll just roll that bead. So it's a credit to the accuracy and the engineering of the chuck, the jaws, and of course the lathe. Now this lathe has done a lot of work. I've taken it to um, all the shows that I do, the wood shows, 
They're now called the um, Timber Tools and Artisan Shows. Uh, they go for three days. I turn from 10 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon with about a half an hour break. And I turn some b winged burl bowls and things that are really out of kilter. And I've probably done at the shows, I calculated about 160 hours of turning and the jaws, the sorry, the lathe is still accurate as steady as when I first got it about three years ago. It's very, very quiet. Oh, we're turning some captured rings there. I'd better get that off before uh, it does some damage. So you turn the wood like as if it's standing still. Well, in this case, I'm turning lead. Just want to round that off a little bit. Incidentally, when you're wood turning, you never ever take a last cut. But for some reason, if you say the word last, the tool starts to shake in your hand. Has that happened to anyone? So I only ever take penultimate cuts. At least that's what I think. There's another one of those captured rings. And I'll roll this. And roll it back. Yeah. And you know, one of the most enjoyable things about wood turning is that when you're turning something that's spinning at about 2,765 revolutions per minute. You've got a sharp tool in your hand. The rest of the world disappears, as do all your cares and woes. And you can have a bit of fun. Just can't see what I'm doing there. Getting pretty thin there. I might just roll a couple of beads here. Will help with my grip. So this pen is pencil is used for very fine writing, not necessarily wood turning. just do one more and a little shoulder I think that will do us there we have it well there's our pencil sharp and now we can get to real work Let's just have a look at that slowing down. It won't look any different. 
get now the delicate part to get it out of the <laughs> out of the lathe without breaking it well maybe it mightn't be fine writing maybe uh short stories i think so let's put that down somewhere where it can't break oh look i'll just show you i turned one earlier as well mm. i turned one the other day there they are great practice for um knowing exactly where to to where to, where to where to um put the tool and how to cut and if you look at a clock <clears throat> if the tip of my tool and that's this part here if that was a clock that rounded part and then i cut either at uh, 1 30 or at 10 30 and it's virtually a slice because i'm cutting at 45 degrees the same as a skew if you go back and have a look at that so to tidy up the bottom of this little pagoda box i've decided to show you also the new sc2 mini chuck and i've mounted the six millimeter pin jaws on that so we can just drop that straight over the top and expand it outwards not too tight and I know for sure that, that the inside of this box is not going to be marked because those jaws are rounded. doesn't need a lot of pressure because I'll be rubbing the bevel, well, caressing the bevel, um, across here. And so the pressure will be against the work. So there's no chance of it coming out. And I have to make sure that the tool can turn to the center and there it is there. So I'm going to come in with the bevel there it is there, perpendicular to the work, and then rotate the tool, get the cut going, and run down and tidy this up. So let's get going. I'm running the lay. Whoop. Guess what I forgot. Wow. My face shield. It's an absolute must. I'll rotate the tool slightly and just undercut this. Remember the work's travelling a lot slower in the middle. And let's have a look. I'm going to start sanding with 180 grit. I will firstly just bring up the dust extraction. And I'll just stop and sand with the grain. And of course, once I've done that, I don't really need to spin the work anymore, I can just sand by hand. Otherwise I'm just going to put more lines in, circular lines in, whereas if I just sand with the grain, in other words with the growth rings, it's actually a lot faster. And I'll just go to 400.
So I sanded with 180, 240, 320 and 400 grit. A little bit of Triple E Ultra Shine. It's a burnishing compound. You don't need a lot. We can turn the dust extractor off. I'll just take that up to 3,000 revs per minute. Oop. Not too fast because if you've got a very, very thin vessel the centrifugal force actually can throw the jaws out in other words force them out a little and you can split the vessel so just take it fairly steady and I'll apply now this um, Aussie oil it's part oil part thinners you can see it there and you shake it up Take a little bit of cloth, sorry, a little bit of paper. The hue and pine itself is quite oily, so I'm going to just apply that. And I'm going to tell you something extraordinary about this timber. It really is something compared to a lot of other timbers. It comes from Tasmania, which is the most southern state of Australia. It's an island. And it grows very, very slowly. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. And the heat will actually, you can see how that's, well, you can't actually see it, but I can feel it. It's gone hard. The heat dissipates, the uh, evaporates the thinners, and the oil just goes pop. And you end up with a beautiful finish. I'll just get the vernier calipers, and I'll show you something. So here we have the verniers, and... I'm just going to measure across there, so we've got about 45. That's 45 millimetres. There it is there, 45 millimetres. Now, as you can see, each one of those little marks is a growth ring, which is a year of growth. So from there to there, we have 90 years of growth because there's a, there's a, a growth ring every half a millimetre. Isn't that extraordinary? 90 years just there. So the whole vessel would be about 120 years growing. So now the main thing to do is to remember which way to turn the chuck to open it. And I'm pretty sure it's that way. <laughs> So there it is again. I'll just show you with the overhead shot. The whole vessel is now complete. And it's good to go. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'm really going to enjoy using those uh, six millimeter uh, mini jaws. Uh, pin jaws, and uh, uh, I can't wait to try it on uh, a few more projects. Now, if you're going to turn something really long, um, then what you can do, like a finial, you can um, place it inside. It'll go through the hollow um, uh, headstock, and you can just turn and just keep feeding out and feeding out and feeding out, and you can do some really, really fine work because um, and those jaws will hold it absolutely beautifully so thanks for watching thank you to record power for inviting me to 
come along and show you what I do. And uh, until next time, stay safe.